Okay, in the following set of examples, we're going to find out if a limit of a sequence converges or if it diverges. All right, we're going to look at about maybe four examples here. So let's take a look. To find out if a, the limit of a sequence converges, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity for the sequence. If it settles on some number l, we say that it converges. If it seems that it's just getting increasingly smaller or more negative or increasingly larger or more positive, we're going to say then that it diverges. But we'll be able to determine that because we have a history, we have a past with working on the limits. So this should be a very similar refresher. Instead of the variable x, we're going to be looking at n and we're going to be determining uh, how a function or uh, uh, in this case a particular recursion formula behaves. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this very first one. All right, this one right here, a sub n equals 2 plus 0.3 to the power n. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. All right, and what does that look like for us? Well, that's the limit as n goes to infinity, all right, of um, 2 plus 0.3 to the n. So what happens when you take something really small and you raise it to some infinite power? Well, consider that 0.3 is 3 tenths, all right? You have a fraction that you're raising to an infinite power and what ends up happening is that it gets smaller and smaller and so small in fact that it approaches zero. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we can say here is that this one right here is just going to approach two because we're left with a constant all right so this um series here i'm sorry the sequence rather um the limit of the sequence is just two so as you get successively smaller the values are going to be approaching just two by itself okay so let's go ahead and take a look at yet another example here we're going to call this one here number five and this one is a little bit uh, more challenging, but it's not that bad. So what we're going to do, we're going to say 9 plus 7n plus 6n to the fourth power. And we're going to divide that by 5n to the fourth power. All right. Uh, plus 7n cubed minus 5. So there's a couple of ways to approach this one right here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Limit as n goes to infinity. We're going to do the actual work for this, and then we'll we'll take a look at what we can what we could have done. All right, but I can look at something like this and I can spit out the answer right away. But because I see something that maybe you don't, and this has everything to do with um, basically asymptotes of the function, if you will. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. What we're going to do is we're going to divide everything out by uh, the highest degree, in this case, n to the fourth power. And then we're going to look at the limits uh, of each individual element and see what ends up happening. So we're going to have 9 divided by n to the fourth plus 7n divided by n to the fourth plus 6n to the fourth divided by n to the fourth divided by 5 n to the fourth divided by n to the fourth plus seven n cubed divided by n to the fourth minus five over n to the fourth. All right, and you should start kind of seeing what's going on here. All right, if we take n approaching infinity, you have nine divided by something insanely large. This is just going to go to zero. All right, 7n over n to the fourth becomes 7 over n cubed. Again, 7 divided by something insanely large to the third power is going to be 0. This right here, n to the fourth divided by n to the fourth crosses out, leaving us with just a plain 6. And the same thing happens with the 5, leaves us just with a 5. And then this right here, 7n cubed over n to the fourth just becomes 7 over n which again is seven divided by something insanely large. This is gonna to go to zero. Uh, similarly, this right here also goes to zero. So what exactly are we left with? Well, we are left with something very simple. The fact that we're now looking at the limit of a constant. The limit as n goes to infinity, basically of six over five. I'm sorry, 
of 6 over 5. The equals should not have been there. So let's take a look. What does that look like? It looks like 6 out of 5 there. All right, we've got that right there. All right, and there's really nothing to it. All right, we have found our limit. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's call this one number six. Let's look at the recursion formula here. It's going to involve some natural logs. All right, this is what it looks like. So right now, you should start seeing two natural logs. You should see some subtraction. Uh, you should probably put on your pre-calculus or maybe even college algebra thinking hat laws of logarithms. What does it mean with logarithms to subtract? Well, it means that we need to divide. So we're going to write this one out in terms of writing it as the natural log first, 7n plus 1 divided by 4n minus 7. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the limit as n goes to infinity. All right, so what can we do? We have the limit then of the natural log of 7n plus 1 divided by 4n minus 7. And we're going to follow in the, pre, in the same principle as the previous one, that we're going to divide out the highest power. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like here. We're going to divide everything in this case uh, by n. So 7n divided by n plus 1 over n divided by 4n divided by n minus 7 divided by n. All right, and let's extend the parenthesis there. These n's cross out here. This goes to 0. This goes to 0. What are you left with? You are left with the natural log of 7 over 4 as your limit. Uh, for this particular problem here, this particular example. So really not much to it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at one very last problem here. All right, and let's see what this one looks like. Number seven. All right, so we have a sub n equal to the natural log of n to the fifth power divided by the square root of n. And let's take a look and see what this one looks like. All right, so let's see here. Um, I'm going to say that I have the limit as n goes to infinity, the natural log of n to the fifth power over the square root of n. All right, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to try to see if I can do something with this because I'm going to get something increasingly large and I just don't know if it's going to take care of what I need. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to use some rules for limits that I know from previous uh, experience and that is here to apply L'Hopital's rule. All right, and what L'Hopital's rule says is if you're taking the limits of some particular function, you can look at the derivatives of the numerator and the denominator of that rational uh, in isolation and then try to simplify. So I think this is the key to solving this one very simply. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply first the chain rule. So we say the limit as n goes to infinity because basically you're going to be taking something to the fifth power and dividing by that huge something and the square root of that at that. So let's see. It's a chain, chain rule first. 5 times the natural log of n raised to the fourth power multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Natural log of n derivative is 1 over n. So that's that part right there. Now this part is n to the 1 half power, right? So we now take the derivative of that in isolation, bring the power down. We have one half, we have an n to the negative one half, okay? And it looks just like that. All right, now we're gonna try to do a little bit of algebra here, all right? And it's really not that big of a deal. What ends up happening, this comes to the top, the two stays in the bottom. What are we looking at? The limit as n goes to infinity, we have five basically multiplied by the natural log of n to the fourth power divided by n, 
right, times n to the one-half power, all divided by 2. All right, now we're taking, again, n approaching infinity. Well, look at what we've got here. All right, we've got the natural log of n to the fourth power divided by something insanely huge like infinity. All right, what this ends up being here is this ends up approaching zero. All right, doesn't necessarily matter what the square root of infinity is at this point because we're multiplying it by zero and then we're dividing it by two. So we end up with something that just equals zero there for us. Okay, so some really nice examples approaching limits in a couple of different ways, um, but otherwise relatively straightforward because you have experience with working with limits from before. All right, so as always, I hope this video was helpful and remember, like and subscribe.